everyone, Freedy here, here and welcome back to another Destiny 2 build video for this week's content, where today we'll be using our Hunter, which is strange I know as you've never seen main Hunter before, until now. Truth be told I've been lazy with upgrading him, but now that he's fully decked out, I can show you a pretty amazing build with amazing utility in Audio Nightfalls, Legendary Lost Sectors, a wide variety of PvE missions and PvP, and all this will be achieved simply with skip grenades. Yes, we are putting all of our time and effort into skip grenades, to not only do all the work but pretty much guarantee us a unlimited amount of them, to where using weapons become non-existence. Skip grenade users, your time must finally come to see the ultimate power that it offers, and with that, let's take a look at the subclass to match it with. Starting off the subclass, we will be going with Way of the Wind, which offers the most in terms of coverage for both melee and grenade. And one thing I was looking for within the subclass is a perk that offers even faster grenade regen to further complement the build in ways that simply doing a ability skill would simply activate it there and then. However, that's not simply the case as I have only come across two perks that fit that description but requires risk, such as combat meditation which drastically increased million grenade regen but at the risk of being critically wounded to activate it, while ebb and flow works off electrifying your target and then following up with melee to gain an increase. Both are suitably good and can both be used within the build if you find the whole arsenal of the subclass just for you. But for me personally, I will be choosing Way of the Wind and Combat Meditation for two reasons. One, it's always going to be active in what you're doing since this is going to be used in any type of content, so any enemies that you face could potentially have a chance to critically wound you there and then, so it's always going to be active in the background. And two, Disorient Blow plus Focus Breathing will come handy for survival, and when using grenades won't be the answer. It's best you play around with Way of the Wind and Way of the Covenant, as I found that both of these with their abilities can be super essential depending on how prepared you'll need to be, with Way of the Covenant being better for the neutral game, while Way of the Wind is more better for fast and surgical attacks. And with that, other perks and buying can further enhance what the best role of action should be for you to pick. For your grenade, you're going to be using the skip grenades, that's it. No arc bolt, no flux grenade, just skip. As one pair with the Shinobi Val and some other mods, you will get a very, very powerful grenade setup like no other. For weaponry, this will all depend on which content you're going to be playing this in, and will be best in terms of activating your abilities, cells, and which combo works well. So I'm not expecting you to have the exact same loadout I have, but similar if you're using this in Nightfalls. Any other content is fair game from there. For primary use of Night Force, for example, where it's going to be seeing a lot of usage, I would go with Sidearms, AR, and the Leviathan's Breath Exotic Bow. With a Sidearm, this could be either your primary or secondary slot, I would recommend you go with a light frame Sidearm with a large magazine and full auto built into it, such as Anonymous Autumn, or aggressive frame Sidearm that can make quick work of disposing badass shields from champions, such as the Smuggler's Word. In my case, I have chosen the Smuggler's Word for its efficiency on the field, and it's perfect backup weapon when my main primary is out of use, which for cleaning up minor adds, it does very well in. However, it does have a high kick to it upon being fired, which is controllable, but may put some of you off, which is why as a backup, the Anonymous Autumn with its much more controllable recoil is a better pick. The secondary, I have chosen the Gallard 42 for its high magazine count, which is more of a personal presence for me. Nothing too specific or special with the weapon, except for its perks it's rolled with, which complement its style of aggressiveness against PvE enemies or PvP players, which is considered top tier to be currently used in PvP at the current moment. Our heavy now will be the Leviathan's Breath with built in stagger rounds against the unstoppable and sheer damage that I can single handedly do against a target. This is a weapon that a lot of people sleep on because of DPS wise, can be easily replaced with something like a Izanagi's Burden or a weapon with firing line. Basically, anything with much faster DPS. But compared to the Leviathan's Breath, it's pretty great at doing one thing that others lack, and that is staggering your target every time, which to me is an increasement in DPS considering you're locking an enemy down, aka boss in one position, so that others can make full use of their moment and thus adding more damage faster compared to without it. You can still use Izanagi's, that's not a problem, but do look into other teammates' gear first to see if you can be flexible elsewhere. For stats, I've gone ahead and optimised the resilience and recovery stat to around the 50 to 60 ranges, so we can soak in as much damage as possible, and then the discipline stat is based at 60 for its decent cooldown rate. 
In this situation here, you do not need to go above 60 for your discipline stat, as your Shinobi Rao and Lightning Strikes Twice mod will provide the necessary energy to fully recover your grenade energy back, which means you won't need to rely on grenade energy mods to make up the entirety of the build. For your recovery stat, do be sure to try and focus any stat points left over into this area so you can recover faster when at critical, as although the resilience stat would make you tougher overall, in high tier content this won't make a lot of difference, where whether you're either in your 50s or 100 ranges. Your mobility, strength and intelligence stat can stay where they are, as no focus is needed for this area unless you want to, of course. For armor, the Shinobi Vow is needed to overall make the build function, just as shown in the video, although I do believe you can get away with this by simply having the Lightning Strikes Twice mod and a lot of grenade energy mods to make up what the exotic does, but you will lose out on some features that the exotic has. For my version, I've gone with the Arc version so I can make use of the impact induction mods to gain energy back upon many hits. However, as my set is already fully optimized, I don't really need to have it as it's pretty much overkill at this point, well, if that's what you want to consider. But for the viewers, yes of course you guys, you can of course add this in if you feel like this is going to be fully optimised within the build of your own. Rest of the armour, you will need one solar affinity armour piece to slot in burning wall minus cells mod, and perhaps a arc affinity cloak to make use of the invigoration perk if you truly want to. Now, for the rest of the mod, you do have the following that you will need for this build. Head, recovery in the hammer of the wall mine mod, Arm, Recovery Mod Chest, Recovery, Surge Detonators and Burn Excel Mods Leg, Resilience and Tyrant Surge Mod Cloak, Concussive Dampener Invigoration, Lightning Strikes Twice Mod and a Global Reach Mod All these mods here are generally all that you need to be able to run any content with champions or basic tier ads and pretty much wipe out whatever is thrown your way as this set is no joke when using it in all day nightfalls where you'll be able to sell the content pretty easily of your own if you wish to do that of course. What you need to be aware of is that the set relies on skip grenades to do the work for you, so the vast majority of your fights you will start off with throwing your grenades first to prop the warm mine cell and then go from there, which isn't a bad thing, it's just something to be fully aware of when you're playing around with it. How this all works now is very simple. Firstly, you throw your skip grenades at your target which once it hits them will proc a warm mine cell to appear, then you detonate it which will wipe out a large radius of enemies within the misty while well, keeping those with higher tier health alive but burning thanks to the burning cell mods. With all this happening in the background, you'll receive a surge in grenade energy thanks to the lightning strike twice mod, and with that stacked on top of the Shinobi Valve's exotic, which offers grenade energy back upon each hit the skip grenade does, you now have a fully recharged grenade again, which you can repeat over and over and over again, and that's it. No use of the Innovation or Bomber mods for Grenade NG Recharge, or use of the Demolitionist perk for your weapons. Just those following mods as previously mentioned is everything you need to throw skip grenades forever, and if you want to, you can use this in PvP for the same effect. However, firstly, you won't get War Myself to spawn, as that would be too broken in PvP. And secondly, how effective you are in PvP to land these grenades will vary, as they can be easily dodged against the most efficient players. But on the other hand, if you've always wanted to relive the Revelry Skip Grenade Chaos from eons ago, then here's something you can mess around with. Now one thing I've noticed with this set is that with the Tyrant Surge mod active, it mentions dealing damage with Arc Grenade, Arc Melee, or Arc Super will proc a wall mine cell, which at first I thought you had to get a kill to proc them. But no, as long as you land a Arc Melee or Grenade hit towards your enemy, you will always proc it once, which means you can use it against bosses to pop warm cells for pretty much all the time, for even more carnage for you and your buddies. So if you're thinking what I'm thinking, then yes, this means Gambit has become even more, well, I'm, I'm not even sure at this point what Gambit has become, but let's just say until the season ends, that Gambit will be even more chaotic for a very good while against bosses and all ads in the mode. Now, once I figured this all out, it meant that adding on something like the Hammer of the War Mind mod for its enemy damage debuff and stack effect meant that overall, just landing a singular cell can change the Tyrion who can burn through the boss the quickest, and with the burn dot effect applied for further damage, and a team who uses light sword attacks, plus a bubble, all well radiance, and in theory you should be able to get the boss down in Gambit or Strikes to 2.5 health, or even more reasonable to be at least two thirds of his own health. 
and that's only if this is applied on the first phase of damage. Now this is all theory because until I actually go ahead and test this with a group who wants to go ahead and test it, I am not 100% sure. But I'm definitely sure that if you have a teammate who has swords and you have this mod following and you have bubble and well, you can at least get at least one bar of health away from a gambit boss or a strike boss easily. It's a lot to take in, I know. But I never thought I could find a hunter build so efficient in terms of cleaning up everything like this build here. And we're not even using a super to do this, nor are we using a certain type of weaponry to achieve this. Unless you're playing Night Force, for example, where you need to have a specific set of weaponry to take on champions. But even then, that's not even an issue. All of this can still be achieved with skip grenades and the following mods. Who would have generally thought that skip grenades for this season would be so damn good? And do remember, the war mine cells can be swapped out easily for crazy combos like I mentioned before in my last video. So if you want to apply a suppression effect to everyone near you, or apply a damage debuff to anyone near your cell, or even apply arc effect at best, it's all there, just swap it out to the flavour you're feeling. So of course, what's the downsides that we need to be aware of? To be honest, not a lot, as it really doesn't come with any sort of warning or major issues before use. The only thing to be aware of is the detonation of the cells in crowded areas, when you have aim assist on, as many many times I have propped the cell, and was going to detonate it until an enemy flies across the screen to show me a good time, which makes the aim assist kick in and target the enemy, which overall basically means that I either miss detonating the cells, or I get completely outnumbered then and then. It's not a big issue to be worried about, but in a very heated situation where everyone is targeting you, it will get you killed more times than you can count. And I wish I was Jacob when I say Amos' values in this game is incredibly strong and also unnecessary at times. Because in that situation there, instead of me detonating the cell, it basically allows me to focus on just the enemy, which if I try to go ahead and refocus again, the Amos tends to take control and make it a bit more harder for you to go ahead and detonate, which overall leads to your death. Now the only other issue is the artifact mod being used, which will go away at the end of the season, but this isn't something to worry about until then, as there is an alternative to this, and if people want it, then I'll be happy to supply it. But now, that's it, that's the only issue to be aware of, so you now should be able to go ahead and tear up whatever content you're based in with this build, as it's really OP, but not so OP to the game breaking point. Do be sure now to share this build around for others, so we can full circle with the Titan and Warlock variations as I do have some other versions that we can mess around with. Now, if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub. Also, follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys in the next one.